Hi, this is Kate from the Shappy Pink Cottage, and I'm going to show you a decoupage version of my painted vintage luggage. Okay? In front of you, we have a sheet that I had copied at Staple. I took my CD, and I told them which ones I wanted to have copies of, and they made me a copy. I think they were 39 cents for this copy, which is a wonderful price. And you just cut it out at home. And we're going to work on the bottom flower. And we're going to put it on this piece of luggage. Alrighty. So to prepare your luggage, you want to spray prime it. I like to use Kills Primer and a base paint of white. Then I am going to do my faux finish background. And I use three colors. And this is a used palette, so you can see all the colors have been blended. And there's a white, a yellow, and a pink. Very simple. And I really just use small craft paints. Two ounce craft paints. You can pick any colors you like. Uh, I like to use the inexpensive paints. It doesn't matter because it just has as good of results as the expensive paints. So I have a light pink, a white, and that's a Traditions Yellow that I have there. Okay, so I blend them on my brush. And I pretty much, I've got one right here. I'm going to bring it over. Just an inexpensive China Bristle brush. Same thing I do on my suitcases I paint. And I dip it into white, yellow, and pink. And then not blending it together, not making it a solid piece. I just lightly put them on, not make them solid. And I get a nice romantic background. Very good. So for my oval, you want to take just a plate from the kitchen. This almost looks like a cafeteria plate. You want to flip it over. Now you would lie your luggage flat, of course. Lie it down and then just trace. Trace. I've used a light blue and a green because I like a lot of vibrant colors. And here's the colors I used for that. And those are folk art paints. Sky blue it looks like and a French blue. Very pretty. And so you can see that it, it's a variation. It's not a solid color. It's white, it's blue, it's green, and it's just really pretty. Okay, so let's go to our sheet. I cut this out. I put it in a water bath. Just let it sit a little bit, soak up some water. You can see it's very, very soft. It's not hard. Uh, it's a very thin paper, so I bathe it in water just for a short period of time. And when it stops curling, I know that it's fully saturated. Okay? And I would take tape, if I was doing my first project and I didn't know where I wanted placement, and I would place on my luggage where I wanted to put my roses. But that looks very nice to me, so I'm going to leave it there. Alrighty. For our glue, we're going to use a Mod Podge. And I put a little bit in a bowl for us. And this Mod Podge, I'll show you what I've got here, just at any craft store. This is an outdoor Mod Podge. I must have been doing some mailboxes. And you can also use them on mailboxes. They would be pretty with the roses. And I put a little bit in there. I am going to take my brush. And I'll start with a small brush because... And I'm going to go up to the top here. And I'm just going to put a layer of March Podge down. Now what's good about this is that it seals as it glues on your on your roses. Alrighty. So we're going to take our roses, place them in the center. There they are. And just press. Now this is a small project, so I do not have a brayer with me, but you could purchase a brayer and it's just really like a, a rolling pin with a handle. And you want to squeeze all the air out of your roses. You're going to start from the center. I'm going to use a brush and just press. Press down, over. Good. And I can see right here, if you see, I didn't get any paint, or I'm sorry, Mod Podge. So I'm just going to lightly lift that up and go under. Now this is a small enough project that it's pretty forgiving, but if you make a mistake and 
your paper peels. Or if you're lucky, you can just get some more prints and use that. And then we're going to put a layer of Mod Podge over our roses. And then a nice even layer. And we'll let that dry. Beautiful. Okay, so that's the beginning of our soup case. And it looks really pretty. Now we can add more roses if we like. But I'm going to decorate the inside of my soup case. And I think I'm going to put some stripes there because that's a really pretty oval. And inside the oval I could write something. I could write, a friend of mine had suggested um, time to leave. Uh, you know, because it is a piece of luggage, how pretty would that be? Just in hand script. And But I'm going to do some stripes now for you. So let's go over to our palette. Let's use the blue again. I'm going to wash off my three-quarter brush. Now I like to use really light, glazy colors. And I like to use a lot of colors at once when I paint. So it's not just solid. It's very shabby not toll painting. Very, very shabby. Okay, great. So here we are. And I'm just going to make, I'm going to start in the center, and I'm going to do some just freehand striping here. And I'm going to start right in the center and down. It's almost like Osprey, if I'm saying it correctly, Osprey ribbon. And as you go, it's getting lighter. I can go over it again if I need to either lighten or darken. In this case, I'm going to go to the center. I'm going to lighten the center and blend some out. Beautiful. Okay, so there we go. We have a nice piece of luggage. I think I see my heels. They look white. I'm going to just paint them blue so it goes together. And I've got my handle up here. And this is a really shabby video because I'm holding it as I'm teaching you. And I think I'll do the same to my handle. And that's it. My piece of luggage is done. And it looks hand-painted, because it is hand-painted. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a try. Thanks.